one layer of fiberglass has made these guys quite rigid. They used to kind of flex when you lifted them up and now they don't. Um, I'm going to be putting a layer on the back mostly just to protect this foam here. Um, these are just doors, you know, they only have to support their own weight and you know, <laughs> I'm hoping nobody's going to be standing on them anyways. So, um, you know, I'm going to just do one layer on the top and one layer on the bottom. So all I have to do before the bottom layer is sand these edges so they're flat and get rid of all this junk on the corners. Um, and then I'm going to put a bottom layer over here. I'm not even really going to fold it over. I'm just going to make it hit right at the edge and kind of meld them at the edge there. So I have one place here at the end of this cedar board where the fiberglass cloth is delaminated from the board. And I'm not sure if that's because as I was cutting it when it was green, it was just a little bit too rigid and uh, my cutting action ripped that away. Or I think what happened is that it wasn't fully stuck down to it or it popped off. It might be that the um, edge of grain of this board sucked epoxy resin in and I didn't have enough epoxy resin sticking that to the board. All of the other corners are fine, just this one here I had a problem with. So I'm just going to basically sand that fiberglass off. I don't need it up here for strength because this board is stronger than the rest of the thing. Um, so I'm just going to basically omit fiberglass on that little section of the end of the board there. It's going to be on the top, I'd prefer it be on the bottom, but whatever. Um, and so it's going to be hidden underneath when the door is closed, it's going to be hidden underneath anyway. So I'm going to be painting this whole thing so the color will all match. It'll just be a little bit lower there. I had initially planned on just doing one layer on the back, but then I realized that if I cut my 39 inch roll um, exactly in half. I could do two pieces on it that would cover basically just the foam and on the back the foam is just slightly lower than the boards because it's a little bit thinner um, and I lined up the front side. So I'm going to actually do two layers. I'm going to do one layer that is basically just covering the foam and then another layer that's going across the entire thing. So the second layer will cover everything. The plan is I'm going to mix 150 grams of resin, and that'll be plenty for the two small pieces of fiberglass there. And I should have just a little bit left over so that I can throw on the two full-size sheets and wet out the middle of them. Um, and then I will mix up another 150, and I'm hoping that'll be enough to cover it since I'm not trying to wrap around the edge. I'm just trying to get the top surface. All right, that first 150 grams of resin went a little bit farther than I thought it would, so I mixed up 140 grams the second time, and that was just about right. I have almost no leftover resin, just a little bit dripping off the edges. It is a lot easier when you're not folding the edges all the way over, though. So you need to wait the exact right amount of time where you can cut this easily, but you're not ripping it off of stuff while you're cutting it. This seems to be about the right amount here. I might have gotten out half hour earlier even. But if you can cut off the majority of this when it's easy to cut, then it makes a lot less sanding later on. Okay. So these guys have fiberglass on both sides. I did two layers on the back, one layer on the front. Um, they are quite strong, so I'm not worried about strength-wise here. Um, quite lightweight, too. And I just need to sand all this stuff off the edge and the drips that came around, drips down. Then I'm going to paint the front that's exposed the front face of the door with epoxy just to fill in the um, woven pattern on the fiberglass cloth. Um, and after I get that done, it'll be ready to paint and ready to go.
I am impressed with how smooth those came out. It's almost like building an entire boat with fiberglass. I kind of learned what I was doing. The front faces of these guys look so nice, I've just switched over to 240 grit sandpaper to try to keep them super smooth. You probably can't tell, but that side of the door front, or the drawer front, will be half an inch shorter than this side over here. Um, but I'll be putting the bottom of the drawer in level, so this way it will look appropriate on the front and be level on the inside. Alright, I have used the urethane glue here to attach the foam to this cedar board. The cedar board is going to be where I have my hardware, the latching hardware and so forth, so that gives me nice good strength here for drilling a hole through and mounting the latch. And this will be the drawer front. Um, and this side here is about a quarter inch longer than that side there because the boat slopes down a little bit, but I'll be mounting the actual drawer bottom level and so this thing will overhang a little bit on one side. But first, I have to sand down this to get all, or at least as much of that, down as possible before I start with the rest of it. I have the four sides placed on top of the bottom. You'll notice I'm putting the good sides on the inside, since people see the insides of the drawers, but really rarely see the outside of the drawer, especially if you put a drawer front on it. And all I have to do now is disassemble everything. I basically put everything together to make sure everything fit. I didn't cut anything wrong. I'm going to disassemble it all. I'm going to put a lot of masking tape coming around the bottom of that bottom piece so that I can tape these side pieces to it and then I'm going to put a lot of uh, Gorilla Glue, a urethane glue down and stick it all together in one go. So if you didn't have the fancy corner clamps, the masking tape would have been just fine for putting something like this together. I put extra weight on top because I'm trying to clamp the side walls to the bottom. That may not be necessary with all that masking tape on the bottom there, but I figured it doesn't hurt to put some weight on top while it's drying. So now we have a drawer-shaped box made out of styrofoam, and of course we will have to put some fiberglass cloth and epoxy inside and outside to strengthen it up. I cut and placed the five individual pieces of fiberglass cloth here on each face. I've had trouble getting fiberglass cloth to kind of go down and around and up inside corners. I always have problems with it pulling away from the corner. So I just did a separate 
piece of fiberglass cloth for each edge. There was a little bit of overlap, maybe a half inch in some places, kind of going up or down and around, but for the most part there wasn't a lot of overlap there. Then I used the one inch fiberglass tape, which basically went in the corner of each of these. So I'd say there's a layer of fiberglass everywhere, and maybe two to three layers in the corners. I used the uh, medium speed hardener, and it worked pretty well. I think um, I still kind of was working fast there, faster than I would have liked. So I think in the future I'm just going to only buy the slow speed hardener. I, I got it done. It was okay for a project this size, but um, I think I'm a slow hardener type of guy. Okay, I'm not going to round over these edges so much as cut them at a 45 degree angle. I think it works a lot better when you can see where your urethane foam edge is. I've cut all of these edges off at a 45 degree angle, which got rid of most of the urethane glue. I'm going to be sanding around these corners and also this side here where I had some epoxy on the table that got stuck to it when I was spinning it around all over the place. And then I'll be putting fiberglass cloth over the outside of this thing. A little bit of work with 80 grit sandpaper and those corners are pretty nicely shaped to have fiberglass cloth just roll right around them. The width of my roll of fiberglass is basically 39 inches with a little bit sticking out the sides. Going the perimeter around this way is about 40-41 inches. So it doesn't quite work, but I'm going to make it work because I'm taking advantage of the fact that I know I'm going to be putting this drawer front on the front of one of these two sides. And it has a nice big piece of cedar there, and I won't need to have fiberglass going all the way down both of these sides. So I can have fiberglass end, you know, a couple inches up on one of these sides, and when I put that drawer front on top, it'll have a thing of fiberglass on the back, plus it'll have the cedar board there for strength. So I'm going to cut this guy such that the length of it will go all the way around here, which is like 51. And then the width of it will go mostly around, and I'm going to be leaving a gap on one side that will be covered by that board. And the only thing I need to make sure of is which side of this do I want to be the front when I put that gap in. Because up until now it's been pretty much symmetrical. When you're draping a box with cloth, you could cut these corners mostly off to get rid of the excess here and fold these guys over just a little bit to keep everything about the same depth or height of fiberglass. Or you could cut right up the center and fold one underneath and then fold the other over the top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut up an inside here and that will leave me a large section here to fold over to this side here um, because I know my drawer slides are going to go along this side and so I'm going to actually try to get about three layers of fiberglass cloth with this one layer of layup um, in there to strengthen that particular area. So my plan is to put down this side first, lift this up, and wrap it around, getting rid of these stringers, like that, and then do the same thing for over here. So I'll basically have about three layers in this area here. Now I might trim a little bit of this off so I don't have it going around that corner so it ends on a flat area. going to be more like that. I have all four corners cut. I've The long sides are folded in. I'm going to put epoxy over the top and the two short sides. Then I'll start on the long sides working from the middle out 
and fold these guys around as I go. But, seeing as how it's raining actively outside, and we're basically at 100% humidity, I think I'm going to have to wait till we get down to at least about 80% humidity before I start working with epoxy. This particular piece of foam had a little inclusion on one edge, so I've decided to make that into a feature because I figure it's probably good to have a hole in the bottom of this drawer in case water somehow drips in. It shun it if the bench seat is um, properly watertight, but maybe when the drawer is open and it rains or something. So I'm going to have a hole in here. I figure I might as well go right through that inclusion. I've put fiberglass on both sides of it. And so I just drilled through the two layers of fiberglass there. But um, I'm going to be making it a little larger. And essentially, I'll be putting some more epoxy and fiberglass down here. So I'm trying to coat all the foam with epoxy and just leave a hole with epoxy all the way around the inside of it. But that'll be my drain hole if I inadvertently get water into the drawer somehow. Because I wrapped both of these end pieces around, this side here has about three layers of fiberglass cloth, whereas all the others are one layer. So I'm taking one piece of cloth and wrapping it around here, so that'll make two layers on these sides, the large sides and the bottom. And I have this six inch wide tape which I'm going to be placing um, around the corner and to here, so that'll put an extra layer right where the drawer slides are going to be attached and wrap that around to the bottom to do kind of, you know, force to the bottom. There is a little flex in here, but it's feeling pretty sturdy. This one is even stronger, because I have a lot more layers on the outside there. It's feeling pretty good. So now, I just need to put another layer all on the inside. So that'll give me two layers on the inside, and then three or four, depending on where you're looking, on the outside here, and two on those outsides. I used nine ounces of resin on the entire outside of this box for one layer. So I'm going to mix up just a little less than three ounces, about 90 grams, um, to do this pan that I'm putting in the bottom. I'm only going to do this bottom piece unless I miscalculate the resin and have a lot extra. If I have a lot extra, I have one side piece that I can put in the bottom and soak and then set on a side. But I'm planning on doing just the bottom here and then doing the rest of these sides later. The 90 grams I had didn't quite fully cover everything, so I mixed up another 30. I suspect if I'd gone 110, I would have been fine at the beginning. I also did not fold these side pieces down and try to soak up more resin from the bottom due to gravity. I'm sure there's lots of resin on the bottom there, probably more than it really needs. But if I'd done 110 to begin with, I probably wouldn't have had to mix up another batch. Okay, I'm going to do these four side pieces. I have my little ends and my big ends cut out there. I'm going to be mixing up nine ounces of epoxy resin, which in the past has been enough to do four and a half of these sections. So we'll see how it does today.
nine ounces of resin was just about right. I had maybe an ounce left over, but that's not a problem because I had this whole bottom section. Um, and so I basically wiped all the excess resin off of the sides down into the bottom and then poured a little bit of excess into the bottom and I painted that orange so the bottom should be nice and smooth and hopefully most of the woven fiberglass cloth texture on the bottom will be gone and then I can do the same thing on the sides after they dry. When I was making this guy, I filled in these holes here and here by wrapping packaging tape around them and then filling it in with liquid epoxy mixed with chopped fiberglass. And it worked pretty well, so I'm going to try it on this guy here. And essentially what I've done is made packing tape mold around this wall. Now this stuff's pretty flimsy. You know, it wiggles quite a bit there, so I can't get this very high or it'll just fall over. I've thought about putting pieces of packing tape across the top. I might do that if it starts to bulge out and I need to hold it in in the middle. Um, but really what I'm counting on here is the fact it's going to be pretty um, shallow of a pour. So really, the surface tension of the epoxy will keep it mostly in place, and these guys are just to keep it from running over the edge. So I'm going to be trying for about a centimeter, maybe 1.5 centimeters. So this width here is 1.5 centimeters, so I'm actually trying for less height than the width of this guy. And really I'm just trying to fill in all these holes and make it nice and smooth on the top, so casting is good for that. And then also tie in to the two pieces of fiberglass here. And so I've cut these fiberglass off, but I cut them off, you know, just a couple millimeters above the foam in most cases. So I'm pretty sure this stuff's going to tie those two pieces of fiberglass together and allow me to have a rigid top piece that joins these two sides of fiberglass without trying to fold fiberglass over 90 degree corners, which never really works. So this guy is 26 inches long by 16 inches wide. That's 52 by 32, so it's 84 linear inches. And um, in centimeters, that's 214 centimeters. And the width is about 1.5 centimeters, so that's about 320 square centimeters. If I go one centimeter high, it's also 320 cubic centimeters, which is the same as 320 milliliters, which is the same as 11 ounces. So I need to mix up 11 ounces of mix. The tricky bit is that's not epoxy, that's mix, because I'm going to be putting in the chopped fiber for strength and the glass beads for volume. So I have to figure out how much epoxy to mix and how much glass beads and chopped fiberglass I'm going to be putting in to get about 11 ounces. So I'm probably just going to make 16 ounces of whatever and maybe not use the last little bit or maybe make it taller. It'll depend on how far these guys start bulging out when I start pouring stuff around them. This is the filler material I've decided to use. I have four ounces by volume of uh, the chopped fiberglass, and then I have probably about five ounces by volume of the glass beads on top. I'm going to mix up six ounces of epoxy resin, mix this all together, and hopefully it'll be runny enough to pour into this guy here. I'm going to be putting it in that Ziploc bag, cut a corner off, and use that to squeeze it out so it doesn't have to pour exactly as much as being squeezed out and flow into there. I figure I'm probably going to have a lot more than I really need, seeing as how the filler material is almost as many volume ounces as I calculated I need. So I figure any extra I uh, don't use there, I will squeeze in around this horrible looking joint down here just to smooth it out and add a little more structural strength, but mostly just to get rid of it in a way that's not a complete loss. I'm using the UV inhibited resin because this is going to be at the top of the drawer and there will be basically no epoxy on top of it, only paint. And also because it is the slow hardener and so that will give me plenty of working time on this.
I didn't actually have enough left over to bother doing anything with. You can kind of see the height there. I'm, I think I got a little more than a centimeter in most places. Texture-wise, you can see some of the fibers um, in the top areas sometimes, but for the most part, they're settling down into the resin and micro balloons. I am getting some issues like this where the tape is not adhering fully and so I have to wipe that off and put more tape around the bottom. But um, it's for the most part holding inside here surprisingly well. I think it's thick enough to mostly hold itself in there. Getting a few little issues where the tape has been poorly applied and so it's making little wrinkles and stuff. I'll have to sand all this down, of course, but I'm going to have to sand the whole top down. It's not flowing enough to be, you know, a nice smooth top. There's areas where it's definitely bumpy, and I'm going to have to sand the top down quite a bit. Might get the whole belt sander out and do it on that.